209 years after Israel was split into the southern and northern kingdoms, here in 2 Kings chapter 17, we find the northern kingdom under King Hosea coming to an end as they're taken captive by the Assyrian king Shalmaneser. Initially, it appears that Israel was taken captive because Hosea refused to pay an annual tribute to the Assyrian king. However, in verses 7 and 8, we're told the real reason. After God had delivered them from Egypt, the people of Israel sinned against God and practiced the customs of the pagan nations that God had driven out before them. Verses 9 through 18 outline the various sins that they committed. They made an Asherah pole to worship the fertility goddess. They served Baal and even burned their sons and daughters as offerings to these pagan gods. The Israelites wouldn't listen to God. They were stubborn like their fathers who didn't believe in the Lord. In verse 18, we're told, Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. None was left but the tribe of Judah only, marking the end of the kingdom of Israel. So what are the warnings in this chapter for us today? Well, first, God is long-suffering and compassionate, but not forever. Yes, he desires that none should perish and that all should have eternal life, but be careful not to mistake his patience with our sinful ways as his approval of our sins. God was explicit in Deuteronomy chapter 28 when he promised the Israelites that if they chose to faithfully obey his commandments, good things would happen. He told them that he would set them high above all the nations of the earth and defeat any enemies that rose against them. He promised to bless all things in their lives. And if they chose not to follow all of his commandments, he would send them curses, confusion, and frustration until they were destroyed. God means every word that he says. Jesus tells us that if we will abide in him, he will abide in us. And abiding in him means believing he is God's son, believing the gospel and receiving him as Lord and Savior following his commandments, and surrounding yourself with a community of believers who are the body of Christ. The flip side is that if we choose to do life apart from him, he will let us do life alone. And when we choose to turn our backs on God and chase after worldly, unfulfilling things, well, we will be worldly and unfulfilled. A second application from this chapter is in verses 24 through 41. It was an Assyrian practice to take their captives and blend them with people foreign to their faith. This was an attempt to dilute and change who they were and turn them into loyalists to the Assyrian way of life, their beliefs, and their gods. Still a tactic of our enemy today, Satan loves to dilute and change us as he surrounds us with ungodly influences. To combat this, we must constantly work to maintain our commitment to God and His commandments to avoid ungodly settings that negatively influence our Christian faith. Let us learn from the Israelites' mistakes and keep our minds and hearts stayed on Him, for in doing so, He promises to keep us in His perfect peace.